what is up guys and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking i'm truly grateful to all those who have been following my channel and if this is your first time seeing this channel do me a favor click the subscribe button so we can go on this motorcycle vlogging journey together so guys as you can see today i'm not on the motorcycle and if you've been following me for a while you would see that i haven't put out any motorcycle vlogging videos in a while well, there's a reason for that and I'm going to tell you that right now. Alright guys, so I live in Shanghai, China. And if you've been following the news in the last two months or so, you would know that Shanghai has been under very strict lockdown for the past two months. And so no private cars are allowed to move, no motorcycles on the road. You are confined to your house at least in the last two two or three weeks um some in some areas you are able to go out of your apartment complex for a few hours during the week but it's not every day it's every other two or three days or so you need a pass to go out of your compound you cannot ride a motorcycle you cannot drive a private car you can only ride a rented bicycle or just walk around and so it's been really, really tough. And that's why my channel has been dry for this long. I've not been able to go out there to put out videos. So bear with me. I hope you all understand. But the good news is there's been a promise that the city will start opening up from the 1st of June. That's about a week from now. So fingers crossed, I can't wait to get back on the road to make more content for you to consume. So let me give you a bit of background of how this whole thing happened. So since the beginning of the pandemic, um, China did a really good job in stopping it from spreading very early on. So since April 2020, when the whole world was going crazy and everyone was locked down and all that, we were able to return to some sort of full normalcy. And so we all returned to work from April, May, there about 2020 until now until the end of february last week of february when cases started springing up here and there mostly in cities like shenzhen and shanghai and i live in shanghai so i'm going to talk about shanghai now it started pockets of cases started popping up in different districts all over the city and my district one was one of the hardest hit so uh some of you may know that the major lockdown came in towards the end of March, that's about almost a month later. But my district, some communities started locking down as far back as late February, and my community was one of them. So it started by us having three days of lockdown, and then uh, we were allowed out. And then about five days later, we locked down again for another three days. But what's particularly bad for me in my case was in my building, in my apartment block, we had cases um, in my building and so the main door that lets you out of the main apartment block was locked and we had to undergo 14 days of quarantine so we couldn't go outside you could only open your door and go downstairs and leave trash in the lobby you couldn't go outside the main door because it was locked with some sort of chain now this was a precaution just to uh, not allow the cases to spread to other buildings in my community so i have been on the lockdown for so long so when the citywide lockdown came in the last week of march i had already been locked down for several weeks and i was already almost used to it no one ever gets used to lockdowns but yeah i could say that i'd already experienced it so when people were making a big fuss about it i didn't really it didn't really hit me too much because i'd already undergone uh, several weeks of, of lockdown and then the major lockdown came and everybody went under lockdown and I should say the city was silent that was the first time in so many years that I've been here that I could open my window because my, my room is close to a, a road and so at night I, I must close my window in order to be able to catch a good night's sleep but I was able to open my windows for the first time because there were no cars. You would only hear maybe one truck, delivery truck, passing by maybe once every two hours or sometimes not at all throughout the night. So that was something positive about it. Sleeping with fresh air is, is always the best. 
so yeah this went on so the initial lockdown was supposed to be well if you know shanghai is divided into two parts we have the Puxi side and the Pudong side divided by the Huangpu River. So the Pudong side was supposed to go on the four day lockdown and they reopened and the, Sha the Pushi side was supposed to go on the lockdown for four days and reopen. But then cases kept rising and uh, I think the authorities had nothing, no other option but to lock down the whole city. But before I continue, let me just say that I'm not here to do politics. I'm just telling you my experience of what this current lockdown has been so this is not a place to discuss politics I'm sorry I don't do politics I'm just telling you my experience now let's go on so this happened and then when cases kept rising the authorities had no choice but to lock down the whole city whether they had a choice or not I, I don't know and it's not mine to say so the lockdown continued and we kept hearing promises after promises, promises after promises. And if you've been following the news, there are so many reports out there. You can go and uh, help yourself on the internet. So this has been going on for close to, for me, close to three months now. And most people around the city have been locked down for two months. But like I said before, for me, it's been almost three months. Now, someone would ask, how about access to food? Well, in the beginning, when they said the lockdown was going to last for just about a week, people thought, okay, yeah, this is just going to be a, uh, a short period of lockdown, so we didn't need to stock up. And so people just did their normal grocery shopping and stuff like that. But then when the lockdown was extended, people started getting worried some getting angry because they couldn't access groceries from anywhere. Delivery companies were stopped. Uh, so there were no deliveries allowed to come into your community. You couldn't purchase. And if you try to buy something, the seller will tell you, we can deliver to your, your, your address. Mind you, this lockdown is not the whole of China. It was just, it's just a few cities. And so in other cities, life was still pretty normal. So you could order something from other cities. Um, but within Shanghai, you couldn't order anything. And if you try to order anything from outside the city, the seller would just tell you, or the system would just tell you, we can deliver to your address. So as time went by, people started running out of food and other necessities. And so there were people protesting online here and there. And then um, the government had to step in and they started providing food every few days. It wasn't much, but I mean, it's, it's fine. I mean, it was like, vegetables and other such uh, ingredients not something that everyone would like to have but at least something like that was provided but upon all that it was still not enough because you have over 25 million people in the city of shanghai alone so to think of a government being able to feed everyone is a good effort but it's woefully not enough so when the complaints came too hard they had to allow some major delivery companies to start delivering so it kind of eased things a little bit. But then um, it's the situation where you can just get what you want as it was before. So now you have to depend on the government or you have to wake up early in the morning and get on a few food delivery uh, apps that start very early. And they have a short period amount of time where you can order things. And as you can imagine, if you have thousands of people living in your community, any shops that are open around that period of time where the app is active, you try to buy something, you have to keep clicking to pay and before you know it, it's gone. So it was some sort of a war trying to get things on, on the computer. But I would say in the last three weeks, things have kind of stabilized. So it's not too bad now. Um, people have come around to find a way to get things. And uh, another good thing is, you know, in very busy cities, people don't really have time for each other. Neighbors just say hi and they pass by in normal times. But during this time, because everyone was in need, a lot of, um, a lot of apartment block groups were created online. And so neighbors could communicate and share. And if someone had a chance to buy something, they would ask the neighbors if you wanted, they added it to the list and go, they got you what you wanted. So all in all, I would say that 
acquiring or getting access to basic necessities has kind of stabilized now. Now let me talk a little bit about the tests that we had to do. So the last time I counted, we've done about 50 tests, be it PCR test or the other one that I can't remember right now. There are self-test kits that you have to do. And then you go downstairs and you have to line up two meters apart per family. And then we do another swab test. So initially when the test started, they were doing the nose swab. But of course you can't do that too many times because then people are going to have problems. Um, so they switch to swabbing your your tongue so you open your mouth and then they swab inside very close to your throat and that's what has been going on now so we've done at least 50 tests now for sure and in the last week it's been every day every morning depends on where you live there's a timetable so when it's time messages come up through the groups group uh, online groups and then you go downstairs you line up and you do the swab so when cases are found they're taken into quarantine and those that are not confirmed in the last month or so in my particular community cases have dropped drastically and we almost have no case so we're able to go out like i said in the beginning we're able to move around the community and we're able to go outside to to walk around if you've been to china before you will know that the communities are usually kind of like gated communities i, I would say every community is kind of gated so you have a gate or two or three where you can go out and so it makes it easy for them to be able to control who is going out and who is not. Unlike in foreign countries where people have their individual houses and it's hard to, to control and tell people what they should do. So that has been the situation. We're doing tests every day uh, in recent days. We are uh, still not allowed to drive. We're still not allowed to ride. And you can only go out maybe twice a week. Your building address is only allowed to go out maybe twice a week or three times a week. There's a schedule and when you go out, you have to show your, your, your last test result at the gate. And there is this card that has to be filled by the security so you can go and come back, blah, blah, blah. You have about, I think it's from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. or something like that. I haven't really used it that much because pretty much everything is, re is still closed. Parks are closed. A few restaurants, I mean, not restaurants, a few shops have opened and restaurants that are opened have permission to do so. And they are not sitting. They are only accepting deliveries. Um, but a few shops are opened. And when you walk around, you see if every time I've gone out a few times now and I've seen that the city is gradually coming back to normal. So you see a bit more people each time I go out that are walking outside or going out to get some necessities. So, like I said, I'm not doing politics. I'm just telling you my experience of this lockdown. I was, since the beginning of the pandemic, I, nev under, I never underwent any lockdown because even when it was very serious at the beginning in China, Shanghai as a city decided we're not going to lockdown. People were just very cautious and we're not going out but it didn't mean you couldn't go out. You could still go out. Some places were closed, but for the most part, shopping malls, supermarkets, a lot of things were still open. So yeah, when it, cases were rising in many, many countries and people had to stay home and all that, we were kind of cautiously free to do what we wanted. Um, yes, Wuhan was under lockdown for several months as well, but many other parts of China were still kind of open. So. Yeah, I, since the beginning of the pandemic, I haven't really experienced lockdown as it should be. And this is the first time I'm experiencing it. So the first two, three weeks, it was really hard thinking of thinking about the fact that you couldn't you just couldn't go outside if you wanted to go outside and you just had to stay at home. And there was this whole thing about, oh, if I get out, I might get infected. There was this almost eerie feel all over the place. But in the last few weeks when cases have dropped, everybody's kind of gotten used to it. And we've been allowed outside in the compound, to, kids are playing, you can go outside, do some exercises. And being able to go outside the compound a few times a week um, has really brought life to about some 40, 50% normalcy for me, I would say. There are some people 
in the city that are still very much locked down but for the most part a lot of people are out there now and uh, it's not as strict as it was about a month ago all right guys so i don't want to make this too long like i said there's been a big promise and everybody is hoping and waiting that, that um, as promised on the 1st of June, the city will start to open up uh, fully. And I hope that from then we'll be able to drive private cars and ride motorcycles just as it was before. And when that time comes, we'll all jubilate. And I, I, can't, I can't wait to, to get back on the, on the Honda CB500X. It's been a while. Well, as to how I've kept the bike, I think in the last three months I've warmed it up about four times and i've ridden since we've been allowed out the last three weeks or so i've ridden it around my compound for a while because as you know if you keep it for too long the tires it's not healthy for the tires um, you need to warm up the oil let it run through the system so the oil doesn't break down uh, it is also healthy for the battery so um, i've tried to keep it and where it's packed I have a cover that I've used to cover it. So uh, the bike is really in, in good condition. And this is, this is something that every machine owner knows that you have to keep the machine running. It's, it's more healthy than just leaving it out there for several months without touching it. If you are around, these are essentials that you have to do. And being a Honda, the CB500X, anytime I, I hit the starter button, the bike starts right up no problems at all so yeah another plus to honda all right guys so this is what i wanted to share with you like i said this is not politics this is purely my experience of a lockdown in shanghai and when things open up i'll get back on the bike get back on the road and make some new videos and bring you some more content so if you are not subscribed to my channel please take a look at the channel if it's something you are interested in i have a ton of videos on my channel take a look at them and uh, don't forget to like this video if you do and uh, subscribe to the channel and share the channel help it grow so together we can build a motorcycle vlogging community so once again guys thank you so much for watching i hope you found this informative and until i see you in the next video guys ride legal ride safe always peace out